All right, guys, tonight we're talking about choices, and I know we've talked about that a lot, about, um, you know, how every circumstance we have choices to make, right? And, um, you know, often we don't, uh, we don't feel like that's a possibility, right? Because often the challenges in life are given, you know, we're, we have this amount of challenges, right? You know, but our lesson in life comes about how we choose to interact with them, right? The challenges in life are given, right? So we just have to choose how we're going to interact with them. And we always have choice around that. We always have choice around that. Where's my cursor? So a well-behaved woman rarely makes history, right? And I think that's something that um, we often get caught up, especially with women around nice, right? We get caught up a lot in nice. And while we're entrenched in our circumstances, it's really hard to digest that we do have choices, right? We get up to our ears, right? You know, our nose is just this close to going under, and we react rather than act, right? Reaction is a backward-flowing energy, while action is a forward-flowing energy, right? What game is worth playing if we don't have a set of challenges? And I think that's one piece that we tend to get lost in, in our circumstances, that we take it so personally. And then we don't realize that we do have choice every moment that we're sitting there, right? Every moment that we're on this planet, we have choices. Now, as Sally always gives us that little push, right? She's like, she, she hates that I say that we have always have choices but then at the same time we're not saying that you're not going to have circumstances that you're not going to have challenges in your life that you're not going to have things that you have to deal with because otherwise what would be the point of being here right so that it's it becomes about how we choose to move through the circumstance that changes the game so at birth you know we're given this gino bucket of choices Every circumstance is about a choice. So every time we make a choice, that's like a move or a play in the game, right? That's a move or a play in the game. So we can either, you know, cover up our heads and choose to not play. But even that is a choice, right? Even that is a choice. Because even then we're saying, I'm going to pull the covers over my head and I'm not playing the game today. Right? So even then we're making a choice. Because often no choice is the biggest choice we'll ever make. And truly that's so true, right? When we're sitting in our house, not choosing, not having any action, you know, somebody else is making our choices for us, which that's the big piece, right? You know, so really we just need to start moving. We always just need to start moving, right? There are no right choices. There are no wrong choices. There's just different experiences. Everywhere we go, there are numerous routes to get there, right? So I think we get, tend to get so caught up in making the wrong choice that we sit and we make no choices, right? Just like the GPS in your car. Like, if you're not moving, it's not talking. And that's how God works. You know, ask and you shall receive. If you're not asking, if you're not taking an action, if you don't have a question formed, if you don't have a destination in mind, such as, you know, we call that goals, right? If you don't have those, there's nowhere to go. They're not going to just hand them to you because it's ask and you shall receive, right? For each and every moment, every possible outcome is available to us. It's all about where we choose to look. Life's experience through our trajectory of choices. So let's think about this, right? Science is saying that for every moment, for every second, every possibility of outcome is available to us, right? We tend to get caught in habitual choice making. So we're, we, you know, it's like we're going in the same direction. It's kind of like driving yourself to work and you blink your eyes, right? And you, uh, or say you're, you're trying to go to the grocery store and you blink your eyes and you're at work. You're in that automatic pilot and making the same choices that you always made without ever even thinking about them, right? So 
we choose how we show up in the world. We don't choose the circumstance, but we choose how we show up. That means if we're out in a bar and we're putting ourselves in a compromised position, what would be the outcome, right? If we're um, driving or walking a tightrope across, you know, the Grand Canyon, what are the possible outcomes, right? See where I'm going there? So how we choose to show up and with what energy and what we're allowing into our bodies, what we're allowing into our circumstance creates the world we live, right? And the consequences are ours. They're nobody else's, right? You know, so when we're blaming and we're reaching outside of ourselves and we're trying to change people and we're trying to change, you know, all this environment around us, that doesn't work. The only thing that works is changing us on the inside. So here's the biggest piece, guys. If you aren't making your choices, somebody is. So in any game you're playing, right, if you go to the bathroom and you don't take your turn, somebody else is going to move ahead of you, right? Somebody else is going to make your choices and take your turns for you. That's what ends up happening, right? So allowing others, though, here's the catch. And this is what, one of the biggest reasons we do it, right? Allowing others to make our choices gives us someone to blame when things don't go well, right? That puts us in a position where we have an excuse to look outside and uh, point fingers, right? You know, you told me to do this. You told me to do that, right? I mean, how many times as a parent do you hear that, right? You know, you told me that if I did this, this would work, right? And you're like, well, you know, I'm not you, right? Now, here's the biggest piece, right? Making new choices brings change. Change, good, bad, or indifferent, is uncomfortable. Right? So we tend to judge because when we're starting to change things, life gets messy. It gets really uncomfortable. Now think about this. If you decide to remodel your kitchen, what that week is like while your cabinets are out, your refrigerator's pulled out, your sink's pulled out, right? Now that's not saying the end result isn't going to be a million times better, but it's saying those two weeks are hell, right? Those two weeks are hell. So... So, what we need to understand is this is a process of deconstruction, right? Deconstruction, again, is always uncomfortable. So, it's the old moves out, that's sometimes people, that's sometimes places, that's sometimes things, right? But the old moves out to create room for what is coming next, right? I always like to think about the theater because I grew up in the theater, right? So a set change is required for the next act to begin, right? You can't like go and put up Macbeth on, on um, a stage for little women. Doesn't work, right? Nobody knows what's going on, right? So we can't upgrade our brain. We can't upgrade our life without getting a new set of, of challenges and a new game board. So the really tricky part is, is allowing the shift to happen, right? Because we have a tendency to reach back and hold on to what we know. Even though we hate it, even though it's uncomfortable, even though we're absolutely miserable, that is our natural state, is to reach back and pull the people back in that cause us pain, right? And we do that. Even though we're casting our circle and we're inviting all those that are not healthy for us to move, as soon as they do, we're like, oh my God, what's the matter with me? Why does this person not like me anymore? Why does that person not like me anymore? When in reality, you ask the powers to be to clear out your space so you could grow and upgrade, right? So during this process, it's really important to not judge what happens, you know, because it's going to feel yucky. I love one of my... Um, 
favorite writers, Adi Ashante, says, you know, this time when things are really shifting, it's the end of the world as you know it. You know, he refers to it as an earthquake. And that's kind of what it feels like as things are shifting and moving. But true, real, lasting change comes from the inside out, right? And it's one choice at a time. One choice at a time. That's really, you know, I think we have a tendency to go, okay, I'm diving in and um, I want everything new tomorrow. But it's not because it's all up to you. So it's becoming aware every day of, oh, I let somebody else make that choice today. Darn, I didn't really like that. That didn't work out so well for me. Tomorrow, I'm going to make that choice for myself. I don't really like turkey. I think I want bologna. Right? I mean, that's what... I mean, and a lot of us truly grew up never making a choice. Right? We never had that opportunity to make a choice. Then we marry people that make all of our choices. And we end up, like, all of a sudden going, I don't even know what I like to eat. I don't know. You know, I don't know what to order when I go out to dinner, right? I don't know what kind of drink I want. I don't know what kind of clothes I like, right? That's what this process is about. One choice at a time. Taking them back, choosing who you are, who you want to be, and why you're here, right? Because if you don't know, no one else does. That's the biggest piece, guys. If you don't know, no one else does. changing you changes everything and it really happens from the inside out it happens uh, you know recapitulation and um, moving into that place of the observer is the most important piece in seeing where our choices are going because if we can watch objectively our current circumstances and objectively, when we move into that place of the observer, it's like taking 10 steps back from the circumstance, right? There's not emotion in this place. It's just we're watching. And we're seeing where, where, where we're leaking energy. Because that's basically what it is. Like we show up like a soaker hose, right? Like a soaker hose is that hose that has little pinholes all over in it and water just kind of seeps out, right? That's how we show up in the world, right? when we've got choices every which way, right? So every time you take a choice back, you take a piece of you back, right? And we put it in, we're like, all right, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna take back a few more. And tomorrow I'm gonna take back a few more. So. Changing you changes everything. That's when you just start stirring the pot up. You know, truly, like, I, you know, in that period of time, I think it's important to just go, okay, I would normally just make this choice, but I'm going to start saying yes to things. Like, that was a big thing to me. I just started saying yes to things, right? Like, it was just like, yeah, I'm going to go do that. Like, normally I wouldn't choose to do that. Normally I would choose to do this. And you know what I mean? And start just experimenting because basically it's just stirring up the pot. Right, because the more you'll do something really out of your bubble, and who knows is going to, who's going to be standing there, right? Who do you, who knows who you're going to encounter that's going to say exactly the right thing, that's going to push you on your track, right? Because I, that's the piece, and it's, it is very much. It's like you set this goal out here, like like with you. Should you know? I'm wanting to travel nurse by this state, right? Then you just start moving. Doing research around what that would look like. Where would I like to live? You know, just action. But it doesn't really matter what the action is. See what I'm saying? Because the action is going to cause the universe to go, I see where you're going. And let's go over here a little bit. Or, you know what I'm saying? And you get kind of tweaked into that space. So think about, think about, you know, the lukewarm statement. Right? He goes, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out, right? Basically, he's to make, make a good choice, make a bad choice, but just make a freaking choice. <laughs> because otherwise, like, you're not playing. You're just sitting there. That's what the whole world is. 
but we don't like to say that. You know, we don't like to say that, and we don't like the responsibility for having to make them, right? Most often, most often we're, you know, either sitting in the parking lot because we're afraid to make the wrong choice, or we're trying to, ignoring our choices and trying to make choices for everyone else. That's a big one. We tend to do that, right? Like, you know, and most often when we're doing that, it's because we're not wanting to deal with what really is happening with us, right? So all of our focus goes out here and we think we know what everyone needs, right? Mm-hmm. right? But when we can show up, especially with our family different, I mean, because those relationships go back to birth, right? I mean, our extent, like our nest family, or, you know, if we can show up different in that space, you're getting there. Right? That's intense. Like those behaviors and those patterns go back, you know, from the time you landed on the planet. So.